Greetings, doom and lang, peace, love and light to you all, family. Welcome to another YouTube video with me, your host, Mathix. Now, we are back at it again. Today is episode four. So we are really moving. Today is episode four of Esoteric Bible Classes or Esoteric Bible Studies. And we're going to be looking at the story of Jacob in the Bible. A very nice story, a very beautiful story. But as all stories within the Bible, it's not a literal story. Remember that these were deep metaphors and allegories and symbolism that the ancient adepts wrote in order for the neophytes or in order to hide certain secrets within these stories that you yourself should be able to, to as you grow in consciousness, come into understanding the deeper meaning. That's the whole point of mythology. Mythology are fictional stories that hold or disguise within themselves eternal truths, truths that we all go through. So that's why you see sometimes some of these stories are very silly. If you think about them from a literal perspective, you know, people talking to snakes or a dude getting animals on one boat, you know, predator and prey, how did that work? You see, like all of these stories were very silly if you look at them from a literal perspective, if you take them from the literal word. But if you look at them from... The, the intention in which they were written at, then they make a lot of sense. So today we're going to be talking about the story of Jacob and his brother. And we're going to be looking at what the whole story means. Okay, so in summary, the story goes like this. Jacob was one of two twins. So it's Jacob and Esau. They are the sons of Isaac, which we did a story about. We, we, we did Isaac in, in episode one, him and Abraham. So he's the son. Jacob is the son of Rebekah and, and Isaac. So this is how it goes. Rebekah gave birth to twins. So the first one, it says that the first one, when the first one was born, you know, he was born with reddish skin and he had hairy you know, he was hairy on his hands. Um, and then when he was born, that's Esau. So Esau is the first born of the two twins. So Esau was born first and then Jacob was born second. And when he was born, he was born holding on to his brother's heel. So Jacob was born holding on or grabbing on. Isaac's heel. Now that's very deep, deep symbology. Again, you know that these stories are not literal because you know that there's no birth where twins are born and one is holding on to the other one. Don't leave me. You know, there's no, these are symbolism. They are deep rooted spiritual meaning within these stories. It's just like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Achilles heel. All of these things, symbolism. All right, so they are born like that. Now, it says that Esau was a man of the woods. He was a hunter. And Jacob was much more reserved. You know, he was a very thoughtful man. He, you know, he used to just tend the flock of his father. And then he'd like stay in the tent most of the time. So he wasn't into the, na the, the nature stuff. Okay, what do these two people represent? These two people represent spirit and matter. Spirit and matter. There's a book in Corinthians that, or, or, or a chapter that speaks about the, the beauty and the splendor of different bodies. It says that just as the physical body has uh, its, its own splendor, so too does the spiritual body. Um, there is a natural body and then there is a spiritual body. The, the physical body is sown first. So the physical body is first. It comes first. And then later on, the spiritual body is, comes next. So you as an individual, your physical body comes through first. It's the first born. It's Esau. So Esau, the man of the woods, that rep woods, that represents the earth element. You know, he's a hunter. So in order to be a hunter, you have to be skilled within tracking and, and moving within the earth. So he represents the earth element. He represents the material body, the, you know, the hair and whatnot. And so he, in the story, had certain birthrights. So he had a certain birthrights that he sold to his brother. So... 
Jacob, being a man who's very tactical and like strategic and whatnot, Esau one day came into the house. He was very hungry. And so this guy had cooked some, Jacob had cooked some meal. And then he's like, yo, brother, feed me, man. I'm starving. And then Jacob was like, okay, now nah, before I feed you, you must sell me your, you must sell me your birthright. He's like, and then, and then Jacob, and then Esau was like, nah, bro, that's fine, man. Like what, what does that even have to, I like, I'd rather sell you that than starve. And so Esau sold his birthrights because he was the firstborn. So there were certain blessings and in certain things that he would get because of him being the firstborn. So he sold his birthrights to his brother for a meal. And so this guy gave him the food. He chowed, he chowed, and then he, he basically gave his birthrights to his little brother. Okay. After that whole thing, it says that in the story... There was there was a there was a time when now their father was very old, so Isaac was very old. Um, I hope I've been I hope I've not been calling Esau Isaac. There's a time when their father Isaac was very old, and so he called to his to to his firstborn son Esau, and he said, "Hey Joe, please go go out into the field and then catch me a meal and then cook." Th that meal that you know I like and after I eat this meal I shall give you I shall give you I will bless you I will give you basically your blessings and God will bless you so the father would be transferring the blessings to the firstborn because he had the birthrights so there's certain blessings that were going to be bestowed upon him right and the homie didn't tell his dad what hey, edge Joe Pella and I sold my birthright to my brother so he leaves, he goes out into the field. But when the father was saying this, the mother, Rebecca, was listening. And the, and, and, and the mother, Rebecca, was more fond of, of Jacob than she was of Esau. And the father was more fond of this one than, than he was of the other one. Okay, so the mother heard this and then she plotted. She, she came to Jacob and said, Hey, Joe, born, uh, this is the conversation that was had. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do. I want you to go out into into the into the kraal real quick, and then get two get two lambs, and then I'm gonna cook them in the way that Esau usually makes the meal for your dad, and then you're gonna pretend to be him. And so this guy was like, Ish, but how am I gonna do that, Joe? Because Dimanu Yangazi, he knows my voice. I can't just, you know, he knows he's gonna feel on me and then he's gonna know that I'm not him. He's like, I just do what I say. The mother represents emotions, she represents that intuition, she's that spiritual insight, you know, it's that. You know, it's that side of you, it's the right brain. Usually the father represents the logical side. This guy, he go, he gets the thing, the mother cooks it. And then she takes the skin of the, the two lambs. She puts it on, on his skin because he had smooth skin. He wasn't like his brother. They put it on his skin and on his neck. And then he went into the tent uh, while that guy was, was out to hunt. And so when he's there, he pretends now to be his brother. So he tried to imitate his brother's voice to the best of his abilities. And the father was kind of skeptical. He was like, hmm, hey, Joe, this, this. You don't, you don't, it's like, hey, son, is that you? He's like, it's me, father, your firstborn son, Esau. He's like, mm, hey, hey, come here, let me feel on you, bro. And so he comes, he, he goes closer to his father. His father feels on him and he's like, huh, your voice sounds like Jacob, but your skin feels like Esau. He's like, oh, all right, man. Then he eats the meal. And then after he eats the meal, he blesses he blesses Jacob thinking it's Esau. And he's like, oh, the God, God shall bless you. God shall, you know, bestow the lands and all these things upon you. And then you shall have this, you shall have this. And then he gives him the blessing. And then he goes out of the tent. His brother comes and then he's like, yo, father, hey. He's like, who's this? He's like, it's me, Esau. I've prepared the meal for you. He's like, but then who was it that has that just left here that I gave the blessing to? He's like, and then he knew, like, damn, it was his brother. His brother tricked him. Ah, uh, damn, he tricked me again. He took my blessings and he took my birthrights. Okay, fine. He tried to get his father to, to bless him. But then the, the blessing had already gone to, to his firstborn brother. So now Jacob fearing that uh, his brother now is going to be mad because he's their dad now was gone, really. Like, he, his time on earth was gone. And so after the whole thing, he's like, hey, this guy's going to kill me. 
And so he runs away to a foreign land. He leaves fearing that his brother is going to kill him. And so he leaves to a foreign land. So let me break this piece down now and then we're going to continue on. So what this, well, what this whole thing represents is that Esau is the material, is the physical. It's you. You caring for the physical. You don't really nurture. You don't really think about the spiritual. It doesn't feel as if it's, you know, it's important. You don't, you like, oh, no, okay, I'm going to, uh, you know, my job, my... You know, I'm going to tend to my physical needs. Your, your physical needs, your desires, they, they tend to rule over you. So much so that you sacrifice the inner peace for external comfort, for external pleasures. You are a man of the woods. You are Esau in the physical. You don't really care so much about, you know, things about things of the higher intellect which Jacob represented. So the symbolism of him selling um, his birthrights for food is all symbolic of you sacrificing things that are spiritual and are of your benefit really for lower pleasures, for material pleasures, for material comfort. You're like, nah, these things ain't important, bro. Give me this food. Let me eat. What's a birthright? You see? So the physical nature is, is the firstborn, number one. But now, the reason why when, they, when the two were born is because Jacob was holding on to his brother's heel. Listen, listen, listen. It's gonna get deep. He was holding on to his brother's heel. The heel represents also it's it's the part it's by the feet, right? The feet is the one that is in contact with the earth. So that is symbolic of the spirit holding to the physical, saying, Hey yo, bro, you may be the firstborn, but I'm holding on to you, man. I'm gonna redeem you. I'm gonna redeem you because the spiritual must redeem the physical. The spiritual must overtake the physical, the firstborn, even though it's the firstborn. There's a verse in Corinthians, as I was saying, it says that just as the, where it talks about the different splendors of different bodies, it says that just as the physical, uh, it says that the physical is sown first and then the spiritual. These are the two types of births. They say that Jesus said that uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus, he said, hey, Joe, born I'm for you to. Uh, how can a man be born again? And then Jesus was like, you have to be born again by the renewing of your mind. So the renewing of the mind is Jacob taking over Esau. So him holding on to his brother's heel when they were, when, when they were being born, he's like saying, hey, Mfwet, I'm coming for you, bro. I'm going to redeem you. I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to you too. I'm holding on to the heel because the heel is by the feet. It's the one that's in contact with the earth. That's why when you see in the book of the New Testament, that lady, what did she do? She put oil on her hair. The hair represents the crown. Oil on her hair. And she what? She washed Jesus' feet with her hair. Again, that's the washing of the physical. It's the cleaning, the cleansing of the physical body. I mean, of the, of the material fleshly body, which is represented by the feet because, again, it's the one that's in contact with the earth, so it collects all the dirt. So the cleaning of the hair is symbolic of the cleaning of the contact into the physical. So when you come into the physical, you basically become let's say you, you, you become unclean. You become unclean and you need to be cleansed. And you, are, you can only be cleansed by the spiritual, by the spiritual fire. You can only be cleansed by higher consciousness. You can only be cleansed by higher thoughts, by higher spirit, which is represented by the crown. So now Jacob represented the spiritual. And so when... When he ran, when he left after he got the birthright, that's the separation. Ah, that was the separation. Because 
in the physical, there, there will be that separation. They, they, there's a part where you have to separate in order to look at the two from, from, from the different perspectives. So when he ran away to a foreign land, it's the same thing again in Lion King where Simba ran away into a foreign place or where the prodigal son goes away into a, 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 a foreign land. Or whenever these people you see, they always go away to foreign places because a foreign place now is a place of adventure. It's a place where you are going to discover. So it's the hero's journey. And so now he separated, he ran away so that, hey, hey, Pell, I took this guy's birthright. You see? So he left. Avaya, this guy. His brother stayed there. I got it, the brother is the physical. He's the material arm, the hunter. Didn't really care so much about these things because he represents the physical body. The physical body only wants, you know, like satisfaction. He's a hunter to eat just lower things. It's it's a lower, it's a lower thing, but within the physical body is a spiritual seed that needs redemption, that needs to be redeemed. The body in nature is spiritual. The body is spirit slowed down. It's spirit condensed into physicality. The body is a vibration of spirit in material existence. This is the body. This is Osiris in, in, in ancient Egypt where, where you learn about Osiris wrapped around in the mummy, in the tomb, the, 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 the god of the dead and the underworld. This is the tomb. This is the tomb. The body is the tomb that Heru must go resurrect. Heru in this instance would also represent the psyche, the part of the mind, the light, the hero, the that, that part of you that is supposed to go out and fish and look into the darkness and redeem the father, redeem the subconscious, redeem the, the, the lower material body in all its, its glory, the glory that it has forgotten. The, because now it's so focused, it's condensed into this. So this guy, he goes, he separates from his brother. There's that separation. And he goes out into the into the wilderness, just like Jesus when he was being tempted in the desert. So they're saying that now this guy is walking on the border of, of, of the desert, holding his staff and his rod. Now we're getting into deep spiritual symbology again of the anatomy of the body of God. You are the body of God. So the staff, whenever you see the staff, the staff of Moses or someone holding a rod or a pillar or you hear of a staircase or whatever, a tower, that represents your spinal cord. Represents your spinal cord. Go watch the video that I did about the Christ oil uh, or, the, or the Christ within. It's, it's a video I did way back there. And then go learn about the Christ oil. What happens within the body when when you begin to when you begin to come into higher consciousness and the chakras, the higher chakras begin to come into function, go watch that video. It's going to explain also deeper what it is that I'm speaking about here. So he goes out into the wilderness. He's walking on the, on the border of the desert. The desert, the body is the desert. Whenever they say Moses went out into the desert, uh, what does the desert represent? The, the desert is dry. It's you know, it's, it's a place where you experience what, what they call a mirage. So a desert is a place of confusion. You are deserted there. You are in the desert. It's a place of challenges. That's why Jesus was challenged in the desert. So the body is the desert. He's walking on the, on the edge of the desert. And so when he's, when, when he's walking on the, on the edge of the desert, Jacob now, he, he took a rock. And then he laid it down and then he put his head there and, uh, to use it as a pillow. And then when he was having this dream, and then he had a dream. He had a dream when, uh, where God comes to him. He's like, hey, Joe, you see this place where you are all alone? You're going you, you, you're gonna to inherit this land, bro. This is going to be yours. This is going to be yours from, from the east to the south. Uh, everyone, nations will come to you and all of these things. God is just telling him all of these things. You know, and then he wakes up. He's like, oh, damn. Oh, wait, almost God is with me here. All that means that I, like, uh, I, sh I shouldn't fear then. What is that? The rock, number one, represents the pineal gland. And so now he said that this place, um, we call it Bethel, which means house of God. Just like Bethlehem, 
house of God or Bethlehem, a house of uh, house of bread so he said that this place will it, it, it will be called bethel because in in that lingo in that language it means the house of god the house of god is the head god represents your higher consciousness it represents your upper faculties of of thinking your cognitive abilities your frontal lobes your higher perceptional you know vibrations and frequencies your ability to perceive to reflect you know, to redeem, to remember, to rethink, to restructure, to organize, you know, to, to destroy, to, to reconstruct. All of that is the God mind, the ability to, you know, to decode, to encode, all of that. So that's that's what God is. That's what that's what whenever they talk about God. So now God having this conversation with him in the desert, you know what that is? You in your body, your body has within it memories and informations of trillions and, and, and trillions upon trillions of years of your traveling throughout different uh, dimensions and galaxies and solar systems, your different incarnations as ethereal beings, as, as, as a solar entity, as a lunar entity. You've been moving throughout time and, 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 and in your different incarnations, you you cut off certain memories in order to exist as that temporary vessel that you would be taking on. So in order to exist as a human, there's a veil that is put that now shuts away all of your entirety because if all of who you were were to come into the physical, the physical body wouldn't be able to sustain it. So that's why you grow slowly. That's why they say that the first born is the body. So the body is born and then the body now develops in strength, it develops in abilities, it develops in many things, it develops in the levels of the chakras so that it can be able to, in its old age, when, when it is strong and firm, it can hold the spiritual vibration of your true self. That's why you first develop your root chakra and then you develop your sacral chakra. These grow along with your body. When you go into puberty and, and, the, and the guy's voice deepen and the girls begin their menstrual cycles, these are not just physical cycles. They are also cycles of consciousness changing because you're beginning to notice the opposite sex. Oh, oh damn. And then your solar plexus develop. You begin to, be, to, to develop a sense of power. Your, your heart chakra develops. You begin to, you know, all of these things. And as you grow and you, you, you get into your 30s, they, they, they call that your Saturn return. Your planets begin to align in different ways. You get into your 40s, your third eye. You get into your old age and your crown chakra. So the older you grow, the more vibration of the higher that you can hold in the physical. And then the spiritual now is, is alchemized into the physical. So the body is Esau born first and then the spiritual. So the promises that God was giving to him in the dream was the promises of all the enlightenment that he can have. The land and then and, and the wealth that he was being promised is nothing but the, 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 the return of who he really is anyway. Because once you come into spiritual enlightenment, you, you don't really necessarily crave for the external because you realize just how much the internal has, the internal has the eternal, woohoo, the internal has the eternal, within you, you hold eternal memories that you just don't have access to, and that's the promises like, yo, Joe, I'm free to, trust me, I'm with you, bro, I'm with you, and the rock that he was laying on is the third eye, because within the pineal gland, the scientists have now discovered things that the ancients have always known and that there's crystals actually in the third eye, in the pineal gland that they speak about in the book of Revelation where they speak about the crystal city. That like when, when, when the Lamb of God rises, there'll be a crystal city that lights up. That's the third eye. It begins to light up and you begin to see vividly, not only into this physical, but you see more vivid things than the physical in your inner world because your inner son, Amen Ra, lights up. Amen meaning hidden, Ra, sun, Amen Ra. There's a light in your pineal gland, a spark of light that lays dormant, that activates when you become anointed by the holy oil. So they say that this guy, after he had this dream, he poured oil on the rock. He poured oil, that oil 
is the Christ energy. Christos, Christ, Christ means oil. To be anointed, crystals, the Christ, the crystalline seed. That's that's what they're talking about. So whenever you watch all these movies or you read all these stories and they're talking about... Uh, I just hope I'm still recording. Uh, and they're talking about the philosopher stone, the holy grail, the golden fleece, the, the Excalibur. All of these things, it represents the third eye. That's, you know, that's the princess that you must go find. All of these things, it's represented by the third eye which now becomes enlightened when the oil, the oil is the manna that Moses was seeking in the mm. desert, the, the, the land of milk and honey, because the pineal gland releases this gold, this gold-like um, hormone or chemical, where the pituitary gland is the feminine one, releases this white-like um, chemical. So that's the land of milk and honey. When the crystalline dew begins to rain down and then it, it, it baptizes and it bathes the, it bathes the head in this intelligence, in this cerebrospinal fluid. So the, the whole tree lights up. When you see the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree and Santa Claus represents all of that. The Santa Claus is the, is the claustrum. It represents the oil. Santa Claus, they say he brings gifts down the chimney. The chimney is the spinal cord because the gifts come from the head, from the heaven, from the chimney. And then it goes down and then it bathes the body and then it brings gifts down. It brings gifts. So these gifts are nothing but the are nothing but the turning of the material body into a higher vibration, the alchemy. So the gifts are the higher frequency, the higher vibrations coming down into the physical to enlighten the body. So after this guy has this dream, now he has this confidence to go back home. It's like, oh no, you know, I, I should go face my brother. What that now represents is that now, once you become enlightened, you must integrate the spiritual knowledge, the spiritual revelations into the physical. So Jacob has to go back to Esau and be like, hey, yo, Joe, that promise of me holding your heel, bro, this is me fulfilling it. So now there's a part where, and okay, I won't get into it, but Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob had 12 sons, huh, huh, what did we say in the last episode, the 12 signs of the zodiac, we spoke about it in Job, we spoke about it, it's everywhere, it's you, the, the 12 disciples of Jesus, it's the 12 cranial nerves, there's 12 cranial nerves within you, so it's the 12, it's the, the 12 apostles, it's the 12 constellations, those are the disciples, and the sun is you, so what is outside is represented in you as well. Let me give you a break. No, well, Kana, Kana, you can pause this. Oh, that's good. This is not live. You can pause this. Let me go in. So, uh, hey, <laughs> we're going in. We're going in. So now he's going back to his brother now because the spirit has to reintegrate. That's now you. It's like I remember when I had my, 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 my awakening and my Kundalini experience and like I just... Man, it was so, it's, it, till this day it was funny because to think that like you have to integrate back into the world and like, you know, you, you become a normal human being again, but you know all these things, like you know all these things about the cosmos and the galaxies and you still have to go buy bread and like, you know, drive around and get, probably do some job and you know, you, you, you integrate into society. You're not going to live a life of like you by the mountain. You could choose to do that, but you must go back to your brother, which means that everyone else who's still living in the physical and, and who may not have the knowledge, you know, they're still thinking, oh, I have to go to church. Jesus is going to come and save me. You're going to go back into that life and, 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 and live a normal life, family, friends, and all of these things, but you'll be different here. You'll be different here. That's what they call the rapture. You would have been taken away and others would have stayed. But the rapture, they always make it seem like in movies, people are going to disappear out of their clothes. No, you right now are experiencing the rapture because you are being taken away in consciousness as you are listening to me and you are understanding this. Your mind is like, damn, what? 
it's separating because all these years you've been going to church and you've been thinking that Moses and Jesus and all these people were actual people who, you know, have physical history. But now you're learning that it's you. So you are experiencing the rapture when you are meditating, when you are breathing, when you're doing yoga and you, and you are in nature and you are, you, you are being taken. That's the rapture. But then others are left behind, but you're still there with them because they have not experienced it. They say that it'll happen in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. So you'll still be in the physical, but you'll be a new person. You'll be renewed. See, so that's now him having to go back to Esau. It's the integration of now the mind and the body, the changing of it. So on the way back, this guy, he has a dream. No, he, he, they say that now Jacob. Uh, so now when Jacob was going back to, you know, to face his brother, they say that he, he wrestled with the man all night. He wrestled with the man all night. So they were, they, they, he's like, ah, they're wrestling with the man, wrestling with the man, you know, they're struggling. Now, who was this man? Huh? You want to give him a name? You These Bible scholars and like, oh no, this man was this person. No, this man was Ezekiel. This man was, no. It was himself. <laughs> You're wrestling with yourself. That's the man. Jacob, remember, Jacob is the hero in you that must redeem the physical. So who is he wrestling with? With himself. You wrestle with yourself. Have you ever tried to meditate? <laughs> Those thoughts that come, we like, I can't even, I'm just going to end up watching TikTok. I'm going to watch uh, some funny videos. I'm going to watch some series and go to Netflix. Because once you sit with yourself, just try it. Try it. Just one day get home from work or whatever it is, whatever it is that you do. Just sit alone. Like, just sit alone. Just, just for a moment, sit alone. Don't, don't, don't turn on your radio, your TV. Just get in your room, lock the door, sit down. Woo! You're going to hear the thoughts. Just, you're going to feel... Just so much is going to, you want to think about the most random things, then the most deepest things. You want to think about things that happened that day. You're going to have anxieties of the future. Wrestling with yourself. Your, your, your mind is just loud. You know, this happens on a daily basis. We wrestle with ourselves. We wrestle with the beast. The beast is you. You're wrestling with the flesh. You must conquer the flesh. You must conquer the flesh. So they say that he's wrestling with a man all night. What is the night? The night is symbolic also of the darkness, ignorance. It's the darkness, but light, the, the dark is beautiful because light comes from darkness. So a light is an incub, I mean, the, the dark is a, is a, is an incubator. It's a, it's, it's, it, it's a womb. That's what the dark is. The dark is a womb. So he's wrestling in the womb. Like, you know, when a mother has to give birth, she screams because she's bringing life into a physical. So even you, when you bring a new life in a form of new state of consciousness, you wrestle with it, you scream and you, it's hard to birth it. You know, you, you have family challenging you. No, no. No, this is demonic. Jesus was real. In, in the name of Jesus, fire. You know, people, you have people trying to pray over you because people think now oh, you're demonic. You're saying all these things. Like, oh, I'm God. Oh, you God? No. You know? And then you're like, but it says it in the Bible. I'm, oh, we're gods. And like, no, the heathen. And you know, you, you're wrestling everything around you. You wrestle with yourself. Your family members wrestle with you. Your friends, like, hey, now you're into these strange things. Uh, you're into occult things. You know, you you battle with life now because you are breaking out of the norm so that's what he was experiencing there when he's wrestling in the in in the night he's trying to get out of this room so they say that when daybreak came daybreak is always symbolic of enlightenment so like when now when when if, when the light was coming what happened the man who he was who he, who, who he was wrestling with I'm a shopper on the hip he hit him on the hip and then he dislocated his hip, right? Now, the hip, if you look at it, it's close to the testicles. When you look at what the testes, testes, in the olden days, even in, in, in some book, and in, in they say that, uh, I think it's in the, some Abraham, when you wanted to give a testimony, they say that you, you put... You, put, you see like how these these people put their hand on their heart like oh I I, I give testimony or I swear or what what back then they said they used to put it on the thigh next to the testicle of the man you know and then they would 
they would swear. So that's where you also get testimony from. You're giving a testimony, right? It's close to the testicles. Hmm? Testament. Testament. Testa means body. Ment means mind. Old Testament, old body. New Testament, new mind. New body, new mind. Old things, new things. So the angel or the man dislocated him. So that represents, and the hip is part of the lower body. The hip is by, is by the legs that you walk with on the earth. Dislocated him on the hip. And then he said, because I've wrestled with you, Joe, uh, you must give me a new name, bro. You must give me a new name. So what that was symbolic of is the, you must dislocate from the physical, your physical desires and passions. You must be in the world, but not of the world. That was, was, that's what was happening to him. The dislocation of, oh, I'm in the world. I'm in a body, but I'm not the body. Most majority, 90% of humans think that they are the body. Whereas they are spirit in a body, experiencing a body as a temporary vehicle or vessel, an avatar for a purpose. You're not the body. Dislocate. That's the dislocation that happened there. And then after that whole thing, the angel or the, or the man... I was like, from today on, you shall be known as Israel. So his name changed. His name changed. And whenever there's a name change, and that's always deep. Because Saul was, was, was never Paul before. He was Saul. And then after he went blind for three days, his name got changed into Paul. After he saw, you know, like some visions and whatnot. But we'll get to Paul in the New Testament. So he changed his name. Israel. Israel. Feminine, a trinity. Just like when you say here in the south, when you say Ra, Ra is masculine, Ma, Ma is feminine, Sedi, Sedi is the light. It's the mother, the father, and the child. Isis, Osiris, Heru. That's what it is. It's light. The balancing of the two hemispheres births a new consciousness the logic and the right the the logic and the intuition must be balanced the yin and the yang it births a next thing two circles put them next to each other in between creates a vesica pisces that's a womb that's the portal that's the yoni that life is born through huh isis feminine ra masculine l l is light boom changed his name what does that mean he's ascended in consciousness right and remember this um earlier on when he was laying on the rock and god spoke to him what did they say he saw he saw a staircase that staircase or that ladder is the spinal cord and they say he saw angels descending up and down going up and down those are the chakras those are those that that's 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 the because the spinal cord is the rod. It's it's the caduceus that you see in the medical field. Have you ever asked yourself why why do why do hospitals have that symbol? That symbol is 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 very ancient. It's 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 a comedic. It's an ancient Egyptian African symbol of the spinal cord because the spinal cord is an extension of the brain. It's an extension of the brain. And on an ethereal level, your chakras exist there. And so when you rise in consciousness, you begin to open certain nodes and certain heavens and certain states, certain dream states, certain psyche, certain gods. The, all these gods and these principles, they are states in you. States in you. They're not external things. Everything is states in you. That you are sent through. That you must develop through. So that ladder that he saw. The angels going up and down. The, that's, the, that's the kundalini energy going up and down. Hmm? That's, that's the... That's... Lako, amadros, wak, going up and down. The heavens. Negotiating. Talking to God. Talking to higher states of you. There's lower states of you. And there's higher states of you. You see, very deep stuff, man. Come on, what? 
and you wanna you wanna think that these things are literal. Ah, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. I think this is this is why the the, the world, you know, they, they they they've managed to lock down people because they, they keep every Sunday, man. Come on, jeez. Yo, man, humanity needs to grow up. <laughs> you know, like yeah, true. Like not everyone, but you. It gets tiring, like sometimes you're just like, come on, guys, you guys, you guys have PhDs and and degrees in you've studied in university for years, but you still believe, and then you'll find doctors and then like all these intelligent people running to church Sunday, believing that a snake spoke, bro. Huh? You have these people with degrees, bro, believing that a guy was swallowed by a fish. And they think it's literal. Huh? You have psychologists, you have quantum physicists and all these people believing believing that some guy took animals and put them on a boat. Huh? Thinking that yeah, no, 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 it's it's real. Uh, yeah, this guy, he really spoke to a burning bush. Huh? Like, like, it's yeah, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing on just how they were able to pull this off. Yo, mind blowing, mind blowing stuff, man. Like, you hear these pastors in suits telling grown men that two people were naked in the garden, and 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 because the lady ate a fruit, now we're suffering. Come on, man. Come on, humanity. Come on. Come on. Hmm? But this is it, man. This is the journey. <laughs> you go from ignorance and then you go back into, you know, you must, you must, you must find yourself again. So, um, let me see. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to leave the story of, you know, process this one. Process it. It's you. It's you. Esau. Material. Matter. Man with skin, yeah. huh? Isaac, um, Jacob, it's, 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 it's that spiritual, the man of the thoughts, you know, the one who must redeem. And eventually, met up with his brother, because you must, you must go back and integrate with the physical. And then when you die, you become like um, Ezekiel, because you must die when you die. You must not die ignorant. You must die with memory intact. You must take memory through death. But in order for you to do that, you need to reach a certain vibration. You need to reach a certain state of self-knowledge. You need to accumulate because knowledge is light. The more light you have, the higher you vibrate, the faster you vibrate, and you are able to retain memory through death. Or else you die ignorant and you are vibrating too low and you, you, you can't reach a certain frequency to reach escape velocity. And then you can't escape physicality. And then you just get thrown back into the cycles of reincarnation again. Remember, you are eternal. Eventually, you must come to this knowledge of yourself and, and reach a state where you, where you leave the physical knowing who you are. Most people die ignorant of this knowledge. And so they can't take memory through death because TikTok and, 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 and trends and, and the Kardashians and, and they have no weight that's like, there's no substance. They, what is it? It's, 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 it's like, ugh. it's like, what is it? Because there you're dealing with, you're dealing with sacred geometry that side. You're dealing with self-knowledge. You're dealing with with light, with harmony, with vibrations. You're dealing with elemental forces and geniuses of, of higher ancients. You see? So all of that is things that are inside. But you're too busy distracted by the outside. that when you die, they're like, okay, what have you learned? There's nothing zoop, blank. And like, ah, oh, dude, you can't exist in these vibrations, bro. Here are things manifest instantaneously, bro. You need to go back to school. They fail you. It's like when you fail a grade, like, ah, damn, bro. You fail a grade, you go back, you study again. So you must be able to pass the grade. 
to pass the grave. Huh? <laughs> peace, peace, love and light to you all, family. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Esoteric Battle Classes. Remember, do comment um, if there's, like, suggest other Bible stories that you want me to speak about. But today, episode four, we were speaking about Jacob and Esau and the whole Jacob's Ladder and what this whole story presents. So until the next time, peace, much love. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share with your friends. Don't be selfish. Peace, family. Thank you.